Coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. Wiper, we got a wiper! We're at Willard this week. We'll show you how to catch wipers, walleye, crappie, and we'll show you the success that DWR is having with their new walleye spawning program. I'm Adam Eakle. And I'm Tanya Keeper. And this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle. And I'm Tanya Kiefer. Hey, Tanya. We're here at Willard today where biologists are taking walleye eggs, sterilizing them, taking them to Red Fleet so they have a sterile population there. First time ever. First time ever DWR has actually put this effort into making walleye sterile for the entire state of Utah. It's not just going to be in the Red Fleet area. Pretty Today exciting. we're going to go out and we're going to catch a few different species to restock Red Fleet and yeah, I'm excited. One of those is crappie and somebody says she's going to fish today. I told her I'm going to catch. Today. I have a song for I love some crappie. <laughs> Let's go catch some fish, huh? We're headed out to meet Travis Reginek. Travis lives in my neighborhood and has been fishing Willard since the late 90s. And the all have this and that's the <laughs> we decided to turn the crappy music off and find Travis and his buddy Jeff catching crappy just outside the North Marina. They should be great stalkers for Red Fleet. Yeah. Oh yeah, good good looking fish. A bobber and a small jig um, seems to be the ticket. We'll tell you more about the crappie and the plan biologists have for these fish later. But Travis wanted to get Tanya on his boat to target some wipers and maybe an eye. So what we're doing is fishing with homemade planer boards with some releases that we fish with. And we'll sail those out a long ways and, and we're able to run multiple fishing rods at the same time. We're going to try trolling with some uh, glass shads, some perch colors, some purple colors, and the main target is trying to catch some wipers today. It's real critical if you keep track of how much line you're letting out. I use a couple different colors of line pieced together so I know about where I am, or you can buy a typical line counter reel and, and that'll do the same thing, but I had a bunch of reels and so I just use multiple color lines. And then what I do is I clip a line on here and I just send this out force of the lure and the speed we're going automatically pulls it out kind of to a 45 degree angle towards our planer board. You can troll anywhere between two miles an hour to almost three and a half miles an hour depending on what that day the, the speed changes seems daily and the lure color seems to change daily. Wiper! We got a wiper! We got a wiper for sure. Well that's definitely a fish. I don't know how Adam's doing but he probably should get his competition gear on. And that's all that out of shallow, so that should be a wiper for us. Yep. Little wiper. Yeehaw! All right, way to go. Nice, nice fish. Yeah. We got a fish. Here, real. It's on. Okay, keep the, keep tension, keep tension. I lost that's track of him. <laughs> <laughs> the fish almost pulled me in. Okay, slow down one second. Okay, there you go. All right, good work. My advice is if you don't catch them, try different lures, try different depths, let more line out, don't stay in one spot. If you don't have a GPS type trolling, uh, fish finder on your boat, recommend throwing a buoy when you get, do get into some fish and typically they'll stay in that same spot for a better part of the day and you'll be able to catch them throughout the day. It's a walleye. the target species necessarily but I'm I'll take it. Well you, you got a fish on that pole I think. Yeah. We got a fish deer. Get up here. Get up here. Get a fish on. Yeah, watch that. <laughs> you saw nothing. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Poor Adam. Okay that's a walleye. Keep reeling. Once it's mouth that's a walleye. Once the mouth comes to the surface keep reeling constant. That's a walleye not a wiper. For oh, sure. oh. oh. Adam Eagle. All right only complaint 
Dude, we gotta get you a camp chef. You can't be cooking on that little guy. What is that? I don't know if I'll be able to finish camp chef, but I'm pretty sure I can figure a way out. Oh, they got small ones. We'll get yeah, you one. Excellent. Nothing nothing better than catching wipers and then eating wipers, fish tacos. Do you like them? Best fish tacos ever. They're pretty good, weren't they? I, you know, I thought we'd worked up a pretty good appetite, and then I turned around and the chef himself is cooking, and I thought, okay, I'll just stay. You guys don't have to, like, kick me off or anything. <laughs> More fish and less eating coming up, but first, tonight's Burt Brothers quiz question. The wiper is a hybrid cross between a female striped bass and a male white bass. Wipers are pound for pound, one of the hardest fighting freshwater fish found in Utah. They also make fine table fare and are great for biologists in that they can introduce wipers to a fishery without the risk of the wipers becoming overly abundant because they don't reproduce. But our Burt Brothers quiz question tonight is, can you name all the waters in Utah that have had wipers introduced? The answer, the fisheries when KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, returns to Willard Bay. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle back here at Willard Bay. Hey, in a moment we switch species and try and help the division catch some crappie to head to Red Fleet. That in a moment, but first, tonight's answer to our Burt Brothers quiz question. And our question is, can you name all the waters in Utah that have had wipers introduced? And here's the answer. Willard is by far the most recognized place to catch wipers, but you can also find them in Good Ski Lake, the Bountiful Pond, Canyon View Park, Newcastle, Otter Creek, Paiute, Minersville, Huntington North, Bullock Draw, Cottonwood, East Canyon, Mona, and Red Fleet Reservoirs. The DWR has also stocked many community ponds and has plans to stock many other community ponds throughout the state this summer to complement those fisheries as well as Sediment Canyon Reservoir to help with the growing chub population there. Here he is. There he is, finally. Feels like a crappie. Crappie fishing is also good at Willard as the crappie are in the midst of their spawn. Biologists are using this annual opportunity as a way to move Willard Bay crappie to a reservoir in northeastern Utah called Red Fleet Reservoir. Willard's got plenty of them. Uh, we've actually had a pretty strong population the last several years. It's only going to be about 200 fish, so we're really not going to make it in the population. But, uh, you know, one thing I want to get out there is I, I encourage anglers to come out and take advantage of the crappie that we have. To give you some background, about 2008, illegally introduced walleye were discovered at Red Fleet Reservoir. The walleye were able to escape Red Fleet and make their way into the Green River. The Green River is home to four endangered native Utah fish species. To ensure more walleye didn't enter the system and threaten those endangered fish, the DWR decided to kill off all of the fish in Red Fleet with a rotenone treatment back in October and reset the entire fishery. How, how do you think crappie will do in Red Fleet? We're hoping that they do good. You know, the reason we're putting them there is, is we don't have a, a crappie fishery in the UNA Basin. They'll, they'll serve two purposes in Red Fleet. They'll provide forage for the walleye and the wipers that are, that are going to be in there. And they'll also provide a sport uh, opportunity for the angling public, and we're hoping that, that they do well there. How are you catching the crappie today? Right now we're doing two different things. Uh, the main one that we're using is something called trap nets. They're just uh, nets that we put perpendicular to shore that the fish just swim into and then get held in. A few crappie. All we need to do is just uh, untie a knot and then dump those fish right into a holding pen or live well. We need a lot more. Look at all these fish! That's a nice one. The other method the DWR used to capture crappie was anglers. About a dozen showed up to help. Why do this, George? Why help out? Well, because, uh, you know, they need the help and we're creating another fishery and, you know, as an angler, I'm going to benefit from that uh, along with everybody else. Say goodbye to Fish Lake. Yellow perch is another species biologists want to put into Red Fleet. So, this past March, dozens of DWR personnel and volunteers went to Fish Lake to catch 1,000 perch to move to Red Fleet. We have a lot of perch here. Um, they're fairly easy to catch, and so we've uh, had these fish tested. They, we know they're disease-free, and so that, that means we can transfer them to any other place in the state legally. And it's a great way to help out Fish Lake as well. Um, we have a lot of perch here, and they can, uh, they can do some damage to other fish species in this lake. So the more that we can take out of here, the better for, for all the other fish and the perch as well. The Red Fleet process, it began as a, a big struggle. It was... It was highly controversial, 
There was probably 80% of the people did not want to see a treatment there. Unfortunately, there's some things that we just have to do as a division and this was one of them. Treat the reservoir, remove the risk for the downstream invasion from walleye and turn it back into something else that we can we can manage, that it's acceptable by the Fish and Wildlife Service and something that we can build on into the future. In addition to the crappie and perch, Red Fleet has also been stocked with cutthroat, rainbow and tiger trout, as well as wipers, mountain whitefish and fathead minnows. Biologists didn't give up on the walleye in Red Fleet either. That story just ahead, but first, over to George for tonight's Fish Tech Fish Report. Hey, George Summer here with Fish Tech Outfitters. We're doing a tip of the week on crappie fishing at Willard Bay today. Uh, we've got the tips, the lures, and the techniques to get you into some really nice crappie. To start with, uh, we've got one of the lures that was hot today. This is a maniac minnow. Um, we've got a bunch of others laid out here. Um, one of the things I want to show you, just a simple red and white bobber. About, uh, we've got a little uh, black and chartreuse tube, about 11 feet between them. Trolled behind the boat, about 30, 30 feet, maybe a little further behind the boat, and the crappie were whacking it. Um, there's a bunch of other things you can use, more maniac minnows, different colors, other grubs as well. Again, that black and chartreuse tube was working good, and a white tube will work. Um, you typically don't uh, need anything other than a crappie nibble. This is a, an important uh, key to catching crappie. Uh, it seemed to work for us today. Uh, another important key was the speed. Just like spinner rigging for walleye, about 1.8 to 2.2 miles per hour seemed to be the ticket to pick them up. Um, depth, uh, 13 feet, the fish were suspended. Um, usually we found about seven to eight feet. They could be shallower or deeper depending on the time of day, but get out and catch some crappie. So for tips and techniques like these and many others, stop in to see us at Fish Tech Outfitters. And now for tonight's fishing line. It's an exciting time for us and I, I think an exciting time for Utah's walleye anglers. Welcome back to Willard Bay where biologists are ecstatic about a new walleye program that will not only help the walleye fishery here at Willard, but also other walleye waters in the state. What we're doing is we're actually spawning walleye for the first time. Uh, we undertook just some small experiments last year, uh, but this time it's, it's the big time and uh, we're really tickled with the results. Right now today what we're doing is we're collecting female and male walleye. The process is basically set the nets in the afternoon. We set about uh, 10 nets each that are 400 feet long. We let those uh, fish overnight and then we go and empty them first thing in the morning. After that we generally go and electrofish the uh, reservoir's inlet and collect us some males. Now the males are a little bit smaller than the females so while they're out there in the lake they're just not getting captured in our nets right now. We're actually doing the spawning on site here. So when the fish get down here, what we do is we actually sort them out. Right. We take basically all the fish that are ripe and we just strip the eggs out of them. And then after that, once we get a pool of four or five females with their eggs just in kind of a white wash tub, what we do is then we strip some sperm from a couple males on top of that. And then we add water, which activates the sperm and that actually fertilizes the eggs. Here's where it gets really interesting. There he is. Remember, we told you that the fishery at Red Fleet Reservoir had been killed off because of the illegal introduction of walleye? Well, biologists have decided to put these walleye eggs back into Red Fleet. Sounds crazy, right? Well, it isn't. What biologists are doing is they are making these walleye eggs sterile. Here's how they do it. As soon as the eggs are fertilized, they are then put into this pressure chamber and held under 9,500 PSI for 10 minutes. The pressure sterilizes the eggs, meaning these walleye will not be able to spawn. Biologists will then be able to control the walleye numbers at Red Fleet through stocking and angler pressure. So we're still going to provide that opportunity, but in this case, we'll have a, a sterile fish in there. It'll be easy for us to control numbers. And then if they do escape downstream and get into the Green River, then we, they won't be able to reproduce and continue to hurt the endangered fish species population that are in the Green River. The DWR also installed a fish screen below Red Fleet Reservoir as a precautionary measure that will capture any sterile walleye if they happen to escape the reservoir. 
We set ourselves a goal of obtaining about 8 million eggs. Right now we're probably sitting at about 25 million eggs that we've collected. So we've done fantastic, exceeded expectations. In fact, the program has been such a huge success that earlier this month, 750,000 sterile walleye fry were released into Red Fleet Reservoir with a goal of around 5 million for the year. And then the ones that go back into Willard, which is our brood reservoir, they're going to be 100% fertile. Willard already this month has received nearly 1 million of those fertile walleye fry. Fry that aren't placed in Willard or Red Fleet will be stocked into other Utah waters that have walleye, including Deer Creek, Yuba, and Big Sandwash reservoirs. Some of the fry will also be donated to the Idaho Fishing Game to help them with their walleye management efforts. Pretty big news for walleye anglers in Utah. Time to take a closer look at one of the other species headed to Red Fleet in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Native to much of North America, east of the Rockies, the yellow perch is a relative newcomer to the waters of Utah, but is now found in many lakes statewide. Young yellow perch eat zooplankton, whereas adults eat larger invertebrates, such as insects, snails, and even small fish. This species spawns in the spring and is fairly unique in that females lay their eggs in long gelatinous strands, usually floating or hanging from vegetation or some other structure. If successful, thousands of young can be produced, and it's these young that provide the food base for much larger predators like bass, tiger muskies, wipers, and even other walleye. Perch will often stunt due to overcrowding unless significant numbers are removed from the system through predation or angling. For more information on the yellow perch or any other critter found in Utah, check out our Utah Field Guide on our outdoors page at ksltv.com. Wow, check that out. Travis is treating those guys right. They got fish tacos grilling on the boat. I think I've got the wrong boat today, but hey, the weather is beautiful, that is for sure. Get out here, enjoy some of the beautiful bluebird skies. And let's find out how the recreation forecast is shaping up by turning it over to Kevin back in the weather department. Welcome back to Willard Bay. Hey, don't forget to check our outdoors calendar page for outdoor events across the state. And if you have an event on the horizon, send us a note. We'll post it right there on our outdoors calendar page located at ksltv.com. All right, I'm eating a little crow here. Well, and after eating a little wiper, she caught a couple more fish than I did. You reeled in fish. a couple more fish. Well, whatever. <laughs> fishing is fishing. Catching is catching. <laughs> I caught bigger fish. I caught more fish. I mean, bit, I'm just all about a bit, being a better fisherman, Adam. <laughs> good, That's all. It's a good wiper, isn't it? It's a pretty large wiper. Willard, uh, the biologists are doing a great job here. Yeah. The fishery is awesome. Yeah. Hey, let's see if you can beat our catch of this week with your snapshot of the week. We kick it off right where we left off back at Willard Bay. Boston just turned eight and is already an avid angler. From fly fishing to fishing in the high country, and now Boston has another passion, Willard wipers. In just three days, Boston caught some monster fish, including this nice wiper. Andy hit ice off at the berry at the perfect time, eh, kind of. You see, Andy had latched into this big old strawberry cut and it started to take some line. Take a look over Andy's shoulder. See the skim of ice that had formed overnight? Well, Andy had to ask his son to throw some rocks to break up the ice so Andy could land this 28-inch, 7-pound cutthroat, his personal best. Last spring at Utah Lake, 6-year-old Thomas caught this big bucket mouth all in his own. As young Thomas was holding up the fish for Dad to take a picture, the fish gave Thomas the slip but gave Dad just enough time for this great photo. A few weeks ago, Talia found her first elk shed, this dandy six point. Nearby, she also found the snake. This past weekend, she went out with her dad on a turkey hunt, and guess what? The little stink found the matching other side. Mom and dad said, to say that Talia was excited is an understatement. The kid, well, she's literally flipping out. And finally, at the ripe old age of 13, Jada not only has an archery buck under her belt, but now a big old tom. The first gobbler that came into view that morning left Jada hyperventilating without a shot. After some reassuring and calming from Dad, Jada settled in and lo and behold, an hour later, the same old Tom came back to the decoy. This time, Jada made a perfect shot to put an end to a great father-daughter hunt. Jada was adamant that she was going to pack out her own bird. Dad said, darn straight you are. Jada can now strut all the way home as she just won our snapshot of the week.
Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a commemorative 100th anniversary National Park's cast iron Dutch oven and skillet. And the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. It's always nice to have a warm meal at any outdoor adventure. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. We got a little armada out here. Betcha. Let's see, fish tacos. Tanya beat me in catching more fish. Got and some walleyes, yeah. got, some, uh, got to catch some crappie, got some wipers. Yeah, you caught a small mouth too, didn't you? Got a small mouth. And that wiper's got to be four pounds. Pretty close. If I don't know if you're light rod, it was a blast. <laughs> I'll bet it was. I'll <laughs> bet it was. Hey, and good work by the division. Red Fleet's going to be popping in a couple years. I thought he was telling me good work, but yes, good work, Adam. Yeah, the <laughs> They've division, done a good job. The division's doing a great job. They've managed this water really well, and hopefully Red Fleet turns out to be just as an amazing fisher as this is. Yeah, so sterile walleyes going into Red Fleet, and it's going to be the only black crappie in the Northeast region. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. All those vernal lights will get a chance to go catch some tasty fish. Yeah, yeah we'll go take some too. <laughs> hey, I'm Adam Eco KSL Outdoors, along with Tanya Kiefer, reminding you to get with your family, your friends, and make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night. <laughs>